This is a tutorial on how to make simple scale drawings of television studio sets in on-site locations, even if you don't have the skills and knowledge of an architect or a professional set designer. If you know how to find out how big something is by measuring it with a tape measure, if you can do basic addition in either imperial or metric, and if you can use a piece of paper, a pencil, and maybe some graph paper, you can do this. Some of what I'll be showing you will be in the metric system, and for other stuff I'll be using the imperial measurement system. Whichever measuring system you use, the theory is exactly the same. One-to-one, -one, or life-size drawings. Let's first look at drawing something in the same size as it would be in real life. Supposing you are asked to draw a picture of, say, a CD jewel case. You take one from your extensive collection on the bookcase, grab a ruler, measure it out carefully, and find out that it's 5 and 9 16 inches wide by 4 and 15 16 inches high. Oh yeah, don't forget the black hinge on the left, which is half an inch wide, but that's included in the total width of the jewel case. Then you take your trusty ruler and a blank sheet of paper and probably draw something like this by measuring out all the dimensions one by one and drawing straight ruler lines based on those dimensions. This is what is called a one-to-one -one drawing because the sketch is a life-size representation of the object. If it's just a small object you want to represent on paper, full-size drawings are great. But if you want to draw, say, a room with furniture, you're going to need a huge piece of paper to sketch it all on a one-to-one -one scale. As you know, we don't do this. We do scale drawings. We miniaturize our sketches so they can fit down onto one sheet of paper. How's this done? What is scale? If you wanted to draw a picture half size of the original object, that would mean that six inches on the drawing would equal one foot on the real object. Here are some ways of talking about scale and to wrap your head around and see how these relationships work. If we were to draw the object one-fourth size, it would be at the scale of three inches equals one foot. The scale one inch equals one foot is one-twelfth actual size because there are 12 inches in a foot. And that means if the drawing were done at the scale one-half inch to one foot, it would be one-twenty-fourth actual size. If you're working in metric, you may find that the best ratio would be one-tenth actual size. One centimeter equals 10 centimeters on the final drawing. 10 centimeters on the drawing would be equal to one meter in real life. If you're in my program at the RTA School of Media, you're given studio plans. The studio floor plan layout pages for RTA are at a 1 64th scale. This means that three quarters of an inch on the paper equals four feet in real life. Now this is a good scale for our floor plans because not only do they fit nicely on one piece of paper when they're this size, but our lighting grids and the width of our flats that we use to build the walls of a room are both based on four foot increments. So it's easy to draw flats on our layout pages and see where they're positioned relative to the grid. First important thing, you'll notice that in writing out the scale information that the drawings dimension is always listed first, followed by the dimension in real life. For example, 3 16 of an inch equals one foot. How to make your own scale drawings. Suppose you're on location and you need to make a scale drawing of the room in which you'll be shooting. You'll need a rough sketch of your original location with all dimensions on it, including walls, doorways, windows, and large furnishings important to your shoot. You get this by going to your location and measuring everything you can imagine you'll need to deal with for blocking and lighting the scene. You'll need a ruler, a pencil, not a pen because you'll probably be making some mistakes, an eraser, and some paper. Regular paper is fine, although some people like to use graph paper when they do their scale drawings. But then you're stuck with those little squares all over your drawing. If you can find graph paper with very faint blue lines for the graphing, those lines will often not photocopy, so you're left with a nice clean drawing. You can get this kind of graph paper in bookstores and stationery shops. But how do you make a sketch drawing in the first place? Let's look at this example. Here's a panoramic view of a small room with some bookcases and a couple of desks in it. It has, left to right, an entrance door with a hat hanging on the back of it, a plain white closet door, a window with a curtain on it, and another fancier closet door, and a whole lot of bookcases, desks, filing cabinets, and other stuff. It's a small space, but we want to shoot a quick sequence in this room. Here's my quick sketch of the room. Compare the picture with the actual floor plan. As we go clockwise from the upper right corner of the floor plan around the room, you can see what I've done. I've moved from left to right and measured everything I could find then sketched out the space. You probably noticed that, as long as I was on location anyway, I checked on a few other things like AC outlets, circuit breaker location, extraneous audio conditions, which way north is, sunlight issues, existing lighting, and so on. All good things you should look for while on location. You'll also see that the numbers sometimes don't quite add up. For example, 
Along the top of the drawing, I found a 12 inch bookcase, a 60 inch desk, a 15 inch filing cabinet, a 32 inch door, and a little 17 inch wall space. Now those don't add up to 138 inches as I measured the room to be. They add up to 136 instead. Unless you're really careful, you're going to have this kind of rounding error in your measurements. Nevertheless, things should be pretty close. Making the final scale drawing. So my room is 138 inches by 105 inches overall. Now my piece of paper is 8.5 by 11 inches. Picking up my calculator, I can check what the biggest drawing is that I can do on the paper by checking dimensions like this. The longest dimension in the room is 138 inches divided by the longest dimension on the paper, which is 11 inches, gives me this. The shortest dimension in the room is 105 inches. I divide that by the shortest dimension on paper, which is eight and a half inches, and I get this. As luck would have it, I won't quite be able to squeeze the drawing on the sheet at one inch equals 12 inches. That drawing would be a little bit too big on the longest dimension. That's too bad because it's a common one inch to one foot scale, which is so easy to visualize. I'll have to go with something smaller, say one inch equals 24 inches. But why wouldn't I go to something in between, like 1 inch equals 15 inches, or 1 inch equals 18 inches? There's nothing wrong with using those scales if you want, but I like using 24 inches because that's equal to 2 feet. Again, making it a little easier to understand. But there's another reason. Architect's scales. These funny looking triangular rulers have a standard ruler on one of their edges, but on the other five edges have scale rulers, 2 to an inch. The common architect scale has 3 32nds of an inch equals to 1 foot, that's a 1 to 128th scale. 3 sixteenths of an inch equals 1 foot. That's a 1 64th scale. 1 eighth of an inch equals 1 foot. A 1 96th scale. 1 quarter inch equals 1 foot. A 1 48th scale. 1 half inch equals 1 foot. A 1 24th scale. 3 quarter inches equals 1 foot. A 1 16th scale. 1 inch equals 1 foot. Our great 1 to 12 scale. A one and a half inch to one foot, that's a one to eight scale. And finally, a three inch to one foot, and that's one to four. But check out the scales on the list. There's no one to 15 or one to 18 scale. Sure, I could use a ruler and a calculator and painstakingly calculate every single dimension for my scale drawing, but I bought one of these architect scales a few years ago because they're only a couple of bucks at a bookstore or an art supply store, so I don't have to calculate stuff anymore. It's like buying 10 little miniaturized scale rulers in one. If you don't want to use an architect scale, I'll show you another method of making your scale drawing right now. Using a ruler. Let's start with the top edge of the room and work our way across using a half inch to 12 inch 1 24th ratio. We'll be taking the real life measurements and dividing them all by 24 to get our paper measurements. The bookcase is 12 inches deep, so on our paper it'll be 1 half inch deep. 12 divided by 24 equals 1 half. Draw a half inch line along the top of your page. The desk is 60 inches wide, so on our paper it'll be 2 and a half inches wide, because 60 divided by 24 equals 2 and a half. So extend the original half inch line by another 2 and a half inches to represent the side of the desk. The filing cabinet is 15 inches wide, so on our paper it'll be 5 eighths of an inch. Extend your line again by another 5 eighths of an inch. The door is 32 inches wide, so on our paper it'll be 1 and 11 30 seconds of an inch wide. Add in the door. The little piece of wall with the light switch is 17 inches wide, so on our paper it will be 23 30 seconds of an inch. Add on the final bit of wall. Your top wall should now look like this on your paper and be 5 and 22 30 seconds of an inch long. You can see it sort of looks like my rough sketch drawing, but it's a lot more accurate on the page. You can continue along like this, drawing the walls of the room, all the objects, the desks and the bookcases, then adding things like electrical outlets, text information, people, cameras, and lights. Using an architect's scale. All of those numbers above are pocket calculator button pushes to get the final number. But if you've bought an architect scale and you've had the foresight to take your measurements on location in feet and inches, you won't need to use a calculator when you're drawing. Here's the top edge of the room drawing with the measurements taken in feet and inches. And you're going to use this scale to do your drawing. Notice that one half symbol on the top right. That will be your scale. And you'll also notice that it has a lot of small fractions of a foot measurements on the far right. Then, reading left, the scale starts at zero and moves forward towards the left of the scale. Let's work our way across the top edge of the room using our architect scale. The bookcase is one foot deep, so on our paper it will be as long as one of the big whole foot lines. The desk is five feet wide, 
so on our paper it will be five big lines long. The filing cabinet is one foot three inches wide, so on our paper it'll be one big line plus three inches on that little scale. The door is two foot eight inches wide, so on our paper it'll be two big lines plus eight inches more on the little scale. The little piece of wall with the light switch is one foot five inches wide, so on our paper it'll be one big line plus five inches on that little scale. You can continue along like this with the walls of the room and all the objects, then adding the electrical outlets, the text information, the people, the cameras and the lights. But because you've used an architect scale, you haven't had to use a pocket calculator to work out how long your scale lines are, and you haven't had to use this ruler. That means you can draw scale drawings much faster than using a regular old school system like this. The final version. Here's what the drawing looks like once it's completed. Compare this to the rough sketch I made earlier. What do I measure in metric? The same principles apply, except you're dealing with meters and centimeters. You'll want to buy a metric scale if you're working in this measuring system. If you're not sure which kind to buy, ask the bookstore or art supply store salesperson for more assistance. Can I just use a piece of graph paper? Sure! Just figure out how scaled your drawing needs to be on that sheet of paper. For example, one square equals six inches or whatever. Then start drawing walls and objects with a ruler using that scale. It might not be as accurate, I mean, how big is a quarter of a square? but it will look fairly decent, although not as clean as the architect scale system. Don't forget that unless you use light blue ruled graph paper, all those squares will show up in a photocopy, making the drawing somewhat messier than if you use other scale drawing systems. Can I use a computer? Of course you can. If you're graphic savvy and want to use a paint program of some type, or if you have access to a computer design program, by all means use it. This tutorial here was designed to show you how to draw a scale drawing by hand using simple tools. For straightforward drawings, though, it's often quicker to use a pencil and a scale to lay out a quick drawing than to fire up the computer software and warm up the printer. But let your own preferences decide. And happy drawing!